started as we're just about uh, 11.02 now. Um, so again, my name is Kyle Tweet and I'm with the Vermont Department of Labor, uh, the Communications and Outreach Coordinator for the department. Um, I kind of went through a lot of the housekeeping stuff. Um, a lot of us, a lot of the information um, that you may be looking for uh, might be on our website. So feel free to go to labor.vermont.gov uh, for more information. We'll continue to be adding people into today's meeting um, as they join us. Uh, but Cam, I will turn it over now to uh, Cameron Wood, who is the Director of Unemployment Insurance um, for the Department of Labor. So Cam, why don't I send it over to you? Um, and let you uh, kind of give an update um, from your perspective. Cam, you are muted. I was muted. Better? Yep. Um, good morning. Uh, Cameron Wood, I'm the Unemployment Insurance Division Director for the Vermont Department of Labor. Uh, happy to be here this morning to provide an update as far as where the department and the UI division in particular is at uh, with regards to the COVID health care crisis that we're undergoing and all the CARES Act provisions that we've been implementing over the past few months. I uh, just wanted to start with, you know, kind of an update. I know this is really geared towards employers, so I wanted to provide an update of two programs that I think uh, are, are going to be more relevant to, to this population. But I do want to just acknowledge that over the past seven to eight months since this crisis began, uh, the department has been doing everything that we can to process claims for both uh, traditional UI individuals who've been laid off, uh, but also for all the employers that have been filing and, um, you know, uh, impacted by COVID and have been filing through the PUA claims um, program. And, and to date, we've paid out over $1 billion in benefits through all programs administered by unemployment insurance to Vermonters. That's over $1 billion that have gone out uh, this year through the unemployment insurance program to individuals who've been impacted by COVID. COVID-19. So uh, it's been, um, you know, an extreme challenge for us here and, and for our staff, but I'm, you know, very proud of the work that we've been able to do to date, uh, all the claims that we've been able to process and, and get that money into the hands of Vermonters who, who really need it. Uh, we acknowledge that uh, we we haven't been perfect and we have a lot of work to do. There's still a lot of individuals who are awaiting benefits and are in the adjudications or review process, um, but we are working as quickly as we can uh, to make determinations and to to get money into the hands of those individuals who are eligible. So, um, but you know, just wanted to acknowledge a lot of the work that's gone on over the past few months. As I mentioned, uh, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm kind of gearing my comments to the employer community. So two programs in particular that I think would be uh, of interest or relevant to individuals on this call uh, that, that the department is still in the in the middle of implementing are the uh, reimbursements for reimbursable employers and then also the benefit charge relief that was passed by the Vermont legislature at the very beginning of this pandemic and our implementation of those two. And, and I'll start with the reimbursable employers. The Under the CARES Act, the uh, specific provision allowed for the department uh, using US DOL federal dollars to cover 50% of the charges for reimbursable employers. And uh, unfortunately, during the second quarter, we were required to bill 100% of the charges and then reimburse 50% of that after the fact. Now, we uh, pushed back on USDOL regarding that provision. We'd prefer to be able to bill uh, 50 percent and provide the reimbursement up front but unfortunately for the second quarter we were not able to do that so when we build the second quarter and we received all the contributions in we then had to transition to try and provide 50 percent of that reimbursement out to those employers as quickly as possible unfortunately due to the limitations of our IT systems you know this is not something that the department has ever done before uh, it took us a little bit longer to get those reimbursements actually out the door 
And so I am happy to say that we have now at this point issued all of those reimbursements. I think we have uh, less than 10 employers left who were still awaiting some information from them in order for us to provide that uh, back to them. But uh, we have been able to provide nearly all of the reimbursements for the second quarter out to reimbursable employers. And now we're looking to transition into the third quarter billing and we're hoping to bill at just the 50 percent uh, instead of the whole amount uh, and providing that that reimbursement up front. We're a little late in getting the third quarter bills out the door to reimbursable employers. We're hoping to get those out and mailed this week uh, and we will be extending uh, the deadline period for that and, and waiving any interest that comes in because of that. So I just want to acknowledge that for the reimbursable employers. Uh, it has been a struggle to get that program implemented, but we're, we finally have been able to do so for the second quarter and we have all those reimbursements out the door at this point in time. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the benefit charge relief for taxable employers, and I know that this has been uh, of, of serious concern uh, as the, the charges you continue to get the charge notices every month and the concerns that you have of those benefit charges racking up and whether or not you will be relieved. Uh, for those of you who may remember back in March, the General Assembly passed legislation that waived up to eight weeks of benefit charges for layoffs that were due to the COVID-19 healthcare pandemic. Um, they also provided the department the uh, discretion to extend that benefit charge relief uh, up through the emergency orders that have been issued by Governor Scott. So uh, you can expect to have benefit charge relief throughout the period uh, of the summer because of the impacts of, of the COVID-19 healthcare crisis. So um, what our message to date has been is just to hold tight because those benefit charges that are accruing against your employer experience rating will not impact your rate until next July. So we have time to address those benefit charges. And uh, now that we've uh, had the claims side of the house stabilize over the past few months, uh, we've been able to shift a few of our resources onto these employer programs. And we're working through that process right now of how we're going to relieve employers of those charges, how we're going to identify the charges, relieve them in the system, and then provide that notice to employers. So I just wanted to inform the employer community here on these calls that we are working on it and we hope to have information out within the next few weeks as far as the process of how we're going to go through uh, and make those updates. So please just know that if you continue to get employer charge notices and you're wondering why you haven't been relieved to date, just know it's because uh, we've been so focused on claims processing and now we're kind of shifting over towards the employer side and we're going to be taking care of those here in the next few weeks. With that, I, I want to take the opportunity to put a plug in for those benefit charge notices that go out, though, because they're a tool that the department is able to utilize to help combat fraud and prevent individuals from filing who shouldn't be filing. So in getting those benefit charge notices, if you recognize someone on your charge notice that maybe shouldn't be filing, uh, you haven't laid them off. Um, you need to notify us as soon as possible so we can address that because it could be somebody who is uh, incorrectly filing. Uh, it could be somebody who's been a fraud or some type of identity theft, and we've been able to use those examples to really uh, prevent fraud um, and also ensure that people who are filing in the system are actually eligible uh, to, to file. So I would just say please continue uh, to monitor those benefit charge statements that come in and just know that we will have information here in the near future about how we're going to go about tackling uh, benefit charge relief across the board. Uh, know that we have uh, more than 24,000 employers who are registered with the department, uh, the vast majority of whom have been impacted and, and have had a layoff because of COVID. And so, um, you know, it, it is a, a um, challenge for us to be able to go in uh, and tackle this issue, um, especially with the limitations that we have with our current IT systems. So uh, please just be patient with us as we as we try to work through. 
Uh, that's really an update as far as implementation of CARES programs. I really want to transition and talk about updates to the UI Trust Fund uh, and where we stand in relation to employer contributions and, and the tax schedule. I know that's on employers' mind as we, you know, hopefully continue to move into a recovery um, from, you know, over the summer and, and the closures from earlier this year. Uh, we currently have approximately $250 million in our trust fund right now. Um, you know, that's not an exact number. It could be just a little bit below that. Uh, but we're still working through the third quarter due date and contributions coming in. Uh, so that's around a 50 percent, a little more than 50 percent decrease of the the amount of money we had in our trust fund prior to the COVID pandemic hitting us. So we really feel that we are in a relatively stable place from, from where the projections were April, May through June. Um, you know, we, we are fortunate in that we had such a robust uh, and adequate funds uh, prior to this crisis, and uh, it's put us in a position where we haven't had to borrow from the U.S. government to date, as many, many states have, and it has put us in a good spot, hopefully going into uh, the winter and into next summer, uh, hopefully through a recovery um, you know, coming out in 2021. So as of right now, uh, we feel that we're in a, a stable position with the unemployment trust fund. And we don't project as of right now that we will have to borrow money from the federal government. However, uh, that is going to depend on how things progress over the next few months through the winter. We anticipate an increase in claims due to our seasonal layoffs, which may be more than uh, more than the average because of the COVID pandemic. Um, but it really depends on um, how the uh, virus continues to spread in the community through the winter, uh, whether we continue to see uh, the numbers that we have over the past few weeks and whether the administration feels it appropriate to uh, further close businesses as we did back in March and April. I am not projecting that to happen. I want to be very clear. I'm just acknowledging that depending on how things progress, we've already seen the closure or reclosure of bars and other similar establishments. So if we get back to a situation we were in in March and April, where there are further business closures, our projections of our unemployment trust fund could drastically change. But as of right now, where we stand, uh, we feel that we're in a relatively stable position going into next year. Uh, some immediate information employers need to be aware of. The taxable wage base will decrease in January. Because we were able to hit Schedule 1, the tax schedule, the lowest tax schedule that we have this past July, that has a corresponding $2,000 reduction in the taxable wage base the following January. So you can and will see a $2,000 reduction in your taxes uh, because of the efforts that were put in uh, pre-COVID and were able to get the trust fund to the funding level that it was at prior to the crisis. So. This will be the lowest tax schedule uh, with the corresponding $2,000 reduction in the taxable wage base we've been at uh, since the last recession. Uh, as many of you may remember the, the effort that was put in during the last recession to bring the trust fund out of a borrowing status and, and put us on a path towards a recovery. Uh, we've finally seen uh, all of the hard work that was done back then pay off right now uh, by hitting tax schedule one, having the corresponding $2,000 reduction in the taxable wage base um, and, and just in time, um, you know, for the impacts that we're seeing with the healthcare crisis right now. So $2,000 dollar reduction in the taxable wage base come January. The unfortunate thing is uh, we anticipate right now that we may go back to Schedule 5 next July. Now that is not, again, I want to be very clear with our messaging here, that is not an official projection. That is just where we anticipate as we stand right now because we haven't even seen the end of this year, uh, the benefits that will be 
be paid out by the end of this year and how much money will be in the trust fund by the end of this year. Those two numbers uh, drastically impact what tax schedule we will be at come next July. So just as we stand today, we anticipate that we will have an increase in tax schedules and it could go all the way back to tax schedule five. And we have been in contact with the committees of jurisdiction at the legislature to inform them of this um, because of our concerns about as we're continuing to hopefully see a recovery from the impacts of this crisis, our concerns about putting too much of a burden on employers in too short a period of time as we try to build on on the recovery over the past few months. So just uh, a note there for you all. That it is on far as what tax schedule we move to and we will be in conversation with the legislature come January as one of the the immediate topics that we need to address to ensure that we a have an adequate fund that we're not having to borrow but also ensuring that we're providing enough uh, stability for employers and not taxing them prematurely if we don't feel that we're in a borrowing status. So I wanted to give an update real quick on the trust fund uh, and where we're at and what you can expect moving into early next year. I want to shift now and talk about seasonal layoffs. Uh, as I mentioned, we we do expect to have a, a um, more claimants file this season than normal because of the impacts from COVID, uh, but we also anticipate all of the traditional seasonal layoffs, um, you know, coming, uh, you know, later this month and, and through the winter. We are doing the best we can to provide information to claimants about um, how they need to file. You know, we've really restructured how we intake claims to date via trying to do as much as we can uh, self-service online as opposed to individuals having to call. So we've been working um, and our, our team has done a lot of hard work on trying to develop uh, informational fact sheets, uh, videos on how to file, whether individuals need to reopen their claim as opposed to establishing a new claim. And we've put all of that information on the department's website. When you go to labor.vermont.gov there on the upper banner, you can see information on step by step of how to file. We ask that you provide that if you anticipate having a seasonal layoff of your staff. We ask that you provide that information to them up front. Uh, we are also more than happy to provide claimant handbooks up front if you anticipate having a seasonal layoff and you would like to get that information to your employees. Uh, we're happy to bring you physical copies or electronic copies of our claimant handbook and all the information that we've gathered to date and provide that to you in hopes that you will provide that to your employees so they can have a smooth transition uh, as they as they either come back onto the unemployment insurance program or need to file for the first time. In addition, I will acknowledge that we will be looking for those individual employers who have seasonal layoffs to work with the department to provide us with the information that we need uh, from you in order to help facilitate the adjudication of these claims. Uh, we, we recognize that there are individuals who have been in the adjudications process for longer than we want them to be, and we're really asking employers to work with us this winter uh, if you anticipate having a seasonal layoff to provide us with the information that we need to help facilitate the processing of those claims. Uh, it's really an all hands on deck, both from the claimant side, the department and the employer side. Uh, the more we get assistance from you, uh, the employers, from the claimants, uh, the faster we're able to process claims and the more we can shift our resources to supporting you, the employer, on uh, some of these other programs that, that I've acknowledged. So really look in the, for the employer community to uh, partner with us and provide us information when we request it as soon as possible. Uh, and if you have questions about it, you can reach out to us. Uh, you can also reach out to me individually, and I'll be happy to, to forward you to the correct person. So I uh, just wanted to acknowledge the seasonal layoffs. Uh, similarly, with the PUA program, there may be some employers on this call who've been impacted by the governor's uh, directives just from this past week. If you have not filed a PUA claim in the past, uh, you can go onto the department's website, 
open your initial UI application. You can acknowledge there whether you are a self-employed individual, which should allow you to transition into a PUA application. Um, and just know that you have to attest that all the information you are providing is true and accurate uh, under penalty of perjury. Um, so please just provide us with all the information up front so we can again process the claim as quickly as we can. But if you haven't had to file a PUA claim, you can go online and file one. And if you have filed a PUA claim in, in the past, maybe because of a close, uh, you had to close back in March and April, you can go online using your same login and password. If you've forgotten your password, there is uh, uh, the opportunity to reset a password or create a new one. Uh, you can log on able to go back and to refile for weeks that you have been impacted. Uh, the PUA program is designed to allow people to file at least two back weeks. So uh, as you go in and if you need to refile, I just advise you to be uh, aware of which weeks you are filing for. Our weeks end on a Saturday. They go from Sunday to Saturday. So when it is benefit week ending, just know that is the week that you're filing for. And if you had hours worked or earned wages in those weeks, please ensure that you're providing that information to us because you are certifying that the information is true and we don't want you to get caught up in any potential review that we're doing uh, on, on a PUA claim. Uh, if you have had interaction with the department and um, you know your your claim may have been deemed ineligible because you were back to work and no longer needing to file, uh, if you have any issues, you can call our PUA uh, line and we are working with our vendor and have been working with our vendor to ensure that those claims that need to be looked at for the PUA program are sent along to a UI specialist as quickly as possible. Um, that way we can review it and get in touch with you. Uh, we are processing those PUA claims relatively quickly, so you know, be patient with us and just know uh, that we should be able to get to your claim uh, within a pretty short amount of time. The last thing I want to mention, and then we'll make sure we, we turn it over to you all for Q&A, and, and Kyle, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you after these comments. Uh, I do just want to mention an update for the CARES Act programs that are set to expire at the end of this year as of right now. So uh, the department anticipates at some point within the coming weeks uh, to transition off of the extended benefits program. Now, that's not likely to impact you as employers, but it will impact individuals who are filing unemployment claims and are either in the EB program or currently filing in the PEUC program. Quick information, you come in, you file your claim, you get 26 weeks of regular unemployment insurance benefits, then you're able to get an additional 13 weeks of what's PEUC benefits, and then an individual can transition onto extended benefits for an additional 13 weeks after that. So if we trigger off of the extended benefits program, those individuals who are currently towards the end of their unemployment insurance uh, benefits cycle, they're either in PEUC or they're in the extended benefits program, they are looking at potentially uh, not having benefits available to them uh, within the coming months. And we are very concerned about that, especially as we transition into the winter. And just know that we're having conversations with the administration about things that we can do uh, to try and help. But also um, we are in contact with our congressional delegation to inform them of the, the uh, ending of these programs and the impact that that's going to have on a lot of Vermonters. So just know that we, we are looking at that. And again, that really impacts claimants, not necessarily employers, but I'm acknowledging that in case there are any claimants on the call or in case you have any of your employees who are currently filing for unemployment insurance benefits. Uh, we are aware of it and we're doing what we can to connect those individuals to additional services that are offered and also to provide them information up front about their benefits potentially lapsing. Uh, on a weekly basis, we're sending out emails to claimants notifying them of the potential end of, of their benefit program. So just acknowledging um, uh, that those two programs may be coming to an end or excuse me, EB may be coming to an end, uh, you know, within the coming weeks. 
And also want to acknowledge the other two programs that were provided for under the CARES Act, the PEUC program that I just commented on, which is before EB. Uh, that program is set to expire at the end of December and the PUA program, which may be of more, um, you know, uh, importance to you all as employers is set to expire at the end of December. Now, the PUA program is available for 39 weeks, and so we actually have some individuals whose PUA benefits will be expiring towards the beginning of December if you established a claim in March and went back to the week that the uh, governor had to close businesses. I believe it was the week ending March 15th. Um, excuse me, week beginning March 15th. Um, we have a lot of employers there. PUA eligibility may be expiring at the beginning of December, um, but that program is set to expire at the end of December um, uh, under the, the current legislation. And, and again, we've been in communication with our congressional delegation, uh, with the administration here to see what we can do to try and provide support. But currently, uh, because these programs are administered uh, by the CARES Act, uh, the State Department of Labor doesn't have any ability to extend them at this point in time. And so we are in contact, like I said, and I would uh, advise you all uh, to the extent you have the capacity to notify your representatives um, or our congressional delegation to let them know if you're potentially going to be impacted. Uh, again, we're looking into it as an administration, but because they're governed at the federal level, um, we are a little... Um, limited in in what we can do so just wanted to provide that information uh, as we're trying to do for everybody at this point in time uh, with that that really sums up my update at this point kyle i'll turn it back over to you and obviously happy to jump in and answer any questions that have come up awesome thank you cam um i do want to thank uh those of you it does look like we had one question in the in the chat i just wanted to kind of reiterate um, if you do have a question for Cam um, on unemployment insurance, uh, we also do have a, a few others on the call today from the department. So if Cam can't answer the question. We we may have him phone a friend. Um, but just in terms of kind of the pro best process to to ask your question uh, with Teams, if you've used it before, uh, you should be able to type your question into the chat, uh, which should just be an icon with a little square with some lines through it. Uh, you can also, if you're more comfortable asking your question uh, verbally, uh, feel free to click the um, hand icon that when you hover over it says raise your hand, just lets me know that, that you have a question. Uh, Cam, the only question that I see right now is regarding hazard pay, which I know is not a program that we as a, the, the Department of Labor are, are overseeing or, or manage, but the question from Cheryl is specifically regarding individuals on employment insurance. So I don't know if, if you're aware of what she's referring to. Yeah. It looks like she, if you want to just summarize uh, for me just what yeah. she's talking about. and Yeah, I can jump in, Kyle. So, um, you know, we at the department are not administering the hazard pay program, but we have been in contact with uh, the individuals who are because this question has come up um, and, and they've reached out to us to see where we can try and assist them. Uh, under the hazard pay, um, there are limitations for uh, employees that were on unemployment during the period in which the employer is also seeking hazard pay. And so the question has come up of how an employer can, um, you know, know or how an employer can attest whether an individual filed uh, for for more than that for more weeks on unemployment than is allowed. Uh, unfortunately, we're in a tough position here as well um, because you know we we have to maintain confidentiality for both employers and claimants in the unemployment insurance program, and so provide information to employers about individuals unemployment benefits um, and individual may be on unemployment but it may not be because of a reduction in hours due to your employment it could be because of a reduction in hours to uh, a different employer um, and so 
we are really struggling to try to cross that bridge with an employer to determine what information we can provide and can't provide. Uh, I would advise employers to start to the best of their ability with their employees. Uh, an employee should be able to go into their claimant portal or their PUA claim to see which weeks that they filed or to determine the last week in which they filed. Um, and I know that not everyone is that that's not going to work for everybody. Um, you know, Cheryl, what I will say is if, if you want to get in contact or provide your contact information to Kyle or myself, I will make sure somebody reaches out to you and provides you with the information that we can provide. Um, again, for those employers, I would I would try to start with the employee, um, you know, who should be able to give you that information. If they can't, uh, you can try to call our employer assistance line. I will follow up with my staff to make sure they're aware. And Cheryl, if you want to give us your contact, we'll try to have somebody reach out to you as soon as possible uh, to let you know what information we can provide. Um, and we'll we'll go from there. Again, you just got to bear with us because um, we can give some information, but it may not be all the information that you need, and it will depend on the circumstances. Great, thank you, Cam. And, and Cheryl, please feel free to post either your phone number or your email in the in the chat. Um, and as Cam said, we will um, be reaching. We'll we'll reach out um, directly. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat at this time. Um, I don't think we had anybody on the phone. So um, I guess any other, uh, I don't know if we have any last thoughts, Cam. Um, I would say just as a whole, um, we will be doing these sessions uh, weekly uh, with the for the department um, and how you joined today will be um, the best process uh, for joining in the future, just going to uh, labor.vermont.gov um, slash calendar. Uh, does look like we had another question from Todd uh, regarding his PUA claim uh, yeah, um, before right I now. jump into close and stuff. So um, again, a lot of information is on our website at labor.vermont.gov while, while Cam's taking a look at, at Todd's question. Um, so please uh, feel free to go there as a, a first and best resource. Um, but as I said, we will be having um, after today four more of these uh, throughout the rest of the year. We'll have one next Monday um, and then we'll have three during the month of December uh, taking the week off uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, does look like uh, Cam again. This was a question from Todd specifically regarding um, PUA um and, and tax returns so i don't know if this is something that's generally applicable or uh, I, I can kind of more I can, specific to todd yeah i can update real quick uh, um todd you know without your specific information I, I i can't really provide you with a direct answer um what i can tell you is um Again, this is a program. Uh, this will be a little bit of context here. You know, this was a program that we've never administered before and we had to build from scratch. And so we've been building the program throughout the months, uh, the summer months and into the fall. We're still building functionality in the program on a weekly basis. Um, and one thing that we've identified was the program was not issuing out adjustments to claims if the individuals stopped filing for benefits. Uh, so Todd, again, without you know your information and, and um, you know, I'm happy to, if you want to put your contact info in, uh, we'll have someone reach out to you. I, I'd, I'd hate to adjudicate your claim in front of, <laughs> in front of all the employers on this call. Um, it could be a situation if you didn't, uh, if you stopped filing and weren't continuing to file, maybe you were able to go back to work, uh, that the system, the adjustment is there and it just hasn't paid out because you haven't submitted an additional weekly claim that could be the issue um, and we're working on that functionality actually right now as we speak we have staff that are testing that functionality right now 
so I could say if you uh, be patient, there there could be an adjustment coming out within the coming weeks. Um, separate from that, if you have continued to file and you haven't received that adjustment, um, it could be because you haven't uploaded the appropriate tax information to the system. Uh, it will not adjust your uh, weekly pay unless you upload the information that we've requested to substantiate the wages that you've self-attested to. Um, the system will not uh, issue out a higher weekly payment if it doesn't have that information. So could be a few different uh, scenarios, Todd. I'd say if you want to put your contact or reach out to Kyle or myself, um, you know, again, we're happy to have someone follow up. Um, and um, and Julia, I, I see yours as well. Uh, nonprofit scenario. We'll try to have somebody reach out to just gather some information um, and, and go from there. Great, thanks, Cam. Uh, and yeah, Todd, please feel free to drop your uh, email into the chat and we will uh, pass that along uh, to Cam. Um, I guess any any other questions from folks? Again, as I was saying, we'll be having four more of these sessions, uh, one next week on Monday, um, and then three during the month of December. Uh, all that information can be found on the Department of Labor's uh, website. Um, you can also, as I said, find more information. Cam was talking a lot about seasonal layoffs, um, among other topics. So please feel free to find resources available on the Department of Labor's uh, Facebook page. So, or on, on our website, sorry. Um, so used to saying that. So just in terms of uh, today's session, I think that's about uh, all the questions that we have. I'll stick around um, in case folks have just questions that I can pass along. Um, I see Todd put his um, email into the chat. So Cam, thanks so much uh, for joining, for jumping on, and thanks to, to you all for taking the time to join us today. Um, as I said, um, please feel free to join us next week. Uh, should be actually at the same day and time. Um, so again, thanks everybody for joining us and have a great rest of your day.